Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. How are you today? Very good. Hi, Jared. How are you? Doing well. I'm, I'm excited for, for us to chat. I, I think we should dive right into it. I'd love if you could tell the audience a little bit about your background, and then we will go from there. Awesome. Let's do it. Cool. Uh, can you can you tell me a little bit about kind of how you got to where you are today, kind of how your career started, and then lead that into Quanchin? Yeah, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Quanchin. We started the company in 2015 at the University of uh, California, Berkeley, um, actually in the same building as the CRISPR team. Uh, that's very, uh, Jennifer do this on the seventh floor. We were down in the basement. We didn't make it up there. And um, I mean, what happened back then is that, um, you know, my background is uh, more in quantitative uh, math and, and finance. I was in finance before. Um, come from a family of, of actually bioscientists. So everyone, uh, mom, dad, uh, both were uh, bioscientists at Max Planck Institute in Germany. And uh, brother is a doctor. We have, you know, I, I grew up in healthcare more or less from a you know, uh, medical sciences perspective and learned a lot from zero to 19. You know, when I was at home, uh, got a lot of free lectures, a little bit too many maybe, but I had a very good understanding of um, when I graduated my home, my dinner table university, I had a very good understanding of everything about the cell membranes and what's going on in the cell. And from there I thought, well, there are other things in, than medicine. There must be other things in the world. So I actually went into business and economics and then into finance, but then came full circle back in 2014 when we, I was like challenged by, um, you know, some, some friends and, and family members who were working on a um, cancer detection or cell separation startup and uh, asked me for help on a quantitative problem in sequencing. And um, yeah, when I dug into a bunch of questions around cancer mutations and patterns and big data sets, it just struck me. I remember that that was like in December uh, 2014 and I had this revelation how to do a certain thing, how to detect cancer early stage in the blood based on uh, a certain combination of, of patterns and that kicked off Quantine because uh, we basically realized, well, that's kind of a big deal after we solved the math problem uh, that is actually very possible in theory to detect all cancers early stage in the blood, all important cancers. Um, and uh, from there, we went to UC Berkeley, asked for like a lab, uh, we had some connections there and um, yeah, kicked it off and then started a clinical mini clinical trial right away. We were able to actually execute that idea within a year, including a mini clinical trial and saw very good results in colon cancer. And that kicked off the company. Uh, so in 2016, it became clear this is a very big deal uh, and that we had some unique abilities. And today, you know, this year we, we just uh, published a paper showing that we have the world's highest accuracy uh, sequencing capability. Uh, so we can do a single molecule sequencing um, with Illumina platforms by introducing new cloud systems and, and signal processing. And uh, now, yeah, we are super excited to actually now become commercial after six years of R&D. Um, and Quanchin is a company that does precision genomics in oncology, but also beyond using two platforms. One is liquid biopsy. So we look for somatic variants, uh, which is good for cancer detection. It's good for companion diagnostics informing treatment uh, for MRD, minimum residual disease detection. So the entire spectrum of oncology uh, diagnostics. Um, but we also have an arm that is germline testing, so clinical genetics, and have some, I think, very revolutionary things there going on on a technology level that have a huge impact on economics, turnaround times, you know, how fast can you get panels for patients um, but also how, yeah, how accurate are the results, how the, how the clinical reports look like. So it's a whole, you know, we are more like a platform innovation company uh, that then has, you can order BRCA panels or you can order cardiovascular panels in genetics. You can order liquid biopsy in oncology from us. Um, but it's more about what's behind that. That is, I think, the big change. And that's very interesting for you know, healthcare systems for administrations to decide how they enter precision medicine and, and what kind of systems they want to put in place. Was this something that you knew 
obviously this has been a, a passion focus for you for, for, for quite some time, but did you, did you ever envision yourself actually starting, you know, a, a company like Quanchin? Um, I guess, and, and when was that point that you knew you were going to, you were going to start a company? Like, when did you know that? It's an, it's an interesting journey. It's, you know, that I went through as a person because I was, as I said, from zero to 19, I got my free lectures at home very excessively on everything that's molecular biology, especially medicine related. And I found it in the end pretty boring. I was like, yeah, I know, I know it's all that stuff and I understand it, but it's not very, it's like, yeah, whatever. I want to look into other stuff. And the same was true for, I had this weird effect that when I read, I always found biology when I compared to other interesting fields like math specifically, but also physics or chemistry. When I read scientific papers, there was always this weird thing that I read the medical papers. Now, this is such easy. I don't even know why people write papers about that. It's so easy to understand. And then I, when I read a physics paper, for example, I, it took me like two days to understand the thing. And so I always thought physics is just objectively way harder than biology. And at some point, I just figured out, no, it's just maybe because of my upbringing, I just have a much faster understanding of it than of physics, for example. Physics is just harder for my brain. Biology is easier. So that is also true for the entire industry. I always discounted it as a little bit, like, yeah, whatever. It's like not hard. People are going to figure it out. Whereas other stuff is super hard. And today I realized, no, it's actually not that simple. Uh, it's just, I had, I just have a certain proclivity for it. And so, um, you know, that, that instinct I had initially is like, oh, let, let's, let's go into other fields and understand them. I realized, no, I actually have a strategic advantage as a person in, in biology and medicine because I, I'm just better at that stuff than at other stuff comparatively also to other people. And so now I'm, I'm embracing this much more. And in the past, I was more discounting it. Um, so short answers, I, I think with 25 or something, I didn't envision myself to be in biotech. I thought, oh, let's, you know, do a little business here, a little finance, and then go from there. Thank you for sharing, by the way. I'm always intrigued about that, that, that like uh, what that answer is for people, right? Because on the, on the podcast, most of the people we have on are founders or like executives of, of some sort. And it's always interesting to see like how early in their, their life that they know that they were going to go into this. And some people it's like, oh, I knew ever since I was 15 and, and others, it was like, it took you know, 10 years after college to determine that I wanted to go down this path. When, when we're talking Quan Chin, what is your like i guess um what is your like ideal customer look like so because we are a platform innovation company that really changes the way we do liquid biopsy somatic variant detection and germline sequencing and analysis um we have a very wide range of markets right, because you can apply that in many ways and so generally we have a direct to consumer arm and we have a clinical arm so these are already two very important distinctions, very big one. one. So we're actually launching a, also a consumer-facing product for early cancer detection uh, together with physician groups um, that specialize in, you know, the detection, early detection of, of multiple cancers, potentially soon all cancers. And uh, what Quantine realized first is that you have to embed these new capabilities within a new kind of preventative medicine algorithm and system that we also have to develop because conventional medicine is just not very good at preventative care and understanding genomics. So both things are added here and that's our consumer facing business under the Serenity brand. And then we have clinical, uh, which where the customers are oncologists, there are any gen clinical geneticists that orders anything, any panel, um, but it's also administrations, whoever is in charge within an organization to ensure strategic advantages in the future and a strategic positioning as a precision medicine player um, in whoever is in charge of data strategy. Uh, so we see that these guys, you know, are most interested in what we do because if you introduce the quantine system to a health system, let's assume you have a million patients or something and you introduce our systems, you know, our quick pitch is it allows you to, in a very short period of time, probably within two years to become the world's 
most the world's biggest you know, whole exome database, for example. So if you have a million patients within two years, you probably have a 20%, you probably have 200,000 whole exomes if you work with quarantine without additional costs. And you can then correlate uh, your entire medical outcome set to the entire whole exome of hundreds of thousands of patients, which would make you the world's most advanced genomics ecosystem. Um, so that's that's something where we see huge interest in because uh, every health system that's a little aggressive and wants to position itself for the future understands that genomics and precision medicine is the future. And if you fall behind, you have a little problem. And if you step up, you have a huge advantage. Thank you for sharing. What What are some of the things that you're really interested in as obviously we're making our way through 2021. It's been a crazy last year, but what are some of the things you're really excited about and looking forward to that you can share uh, moving forward into this year that's going to happen in regards to Quan Chain? Well, I think, I think this year is very important because we will make some strategic moves with key partners on the clinical side. Um, I think what is happening so 2020 was this crazy year where, you know, everyone was COVID, you know, involved with COVID and got a little distracted. But I think what's, what happened behind the scenes is huge, you know, steps forward in precision medicine. And it is very obvious that this decade uh, will be the transformative decade for medicine, like as transformative as, you know, the, the late 90s, 1890s, uh, in, in the 1800s, who, you know, basically launched modern medicine. And I think this decade will be equally transformative, driven by precision AI in imaging, but mostly in genomics. Um, and I think 2021 and 22, maybe 23, will kick it off. So it will basically be this paradigm shift where it will, be, will become very massively and radically clear, you know, that you need to be at the forefront of that as a health system. Uh, and there will be massive consolidation and restructuring of, of the health systems, I think, uh, coming. This is very rapid, what we are seeing. It's not something that happens in 2029 or something. It will start happening this year. Uh, and we see it not just as quantity with other companies too, because we have reached that critical mass. We can go into a health system and rapidly just change the game in terms of whole exome, seeing all genes and all variants of all people um, at very reasonable cost or sometimes even at no cost if you take the current insurance reimbursements. And that will just change outcomes, it will change treatments, it will change diagnostics very directly. That's exciting. And and just so the audience understands, the goal is to have you and other members of your team to come back on the podcast and we do some deeper dives into different areas of Quan uh, and some of those other things that you're really excited about. This is really the intro podcast, right? Where people get to know you, Quan Chin, why you started it and what you're really excited about. And then we'll go into some some deeper discussions on uh, on future episodes. But uh, thank you again so much for, for being a guest on the podcast. And I look forward to continuing to stay in touch and follow Quan Chin's progress. Absolutely. Thanks, Jared.